James Edward Barber, was sentenced in January 2003 to death for beating a 75-year-old woman to death, in her harvest home near Huntsville. A jury convicted Barber of beating 75-year-old Dottie Epps to death with a hammer in May 2001, and recommended in December 2001, he get the death penalty. She suffered multiple skull fractures, head lacerations, brain bleeding, and rib fractures. The judge who sentenced Barber, called it a cruel, heinous and wicked crime that was committed. Barber said in a 2012 court hearing, he had smoked hundreds of dollars worth of crack cocaine, drunk at least a case of beer, and taken a handful of prescription pain pills before he arrived at Miss Epps's home on the night of the murder. After that he claims he had only hazy memories, but could clearly recall being inside the house, and picking up a hammer. Barber narrated his immediate horror at what he had done, how he had recoiled from his own image in a mirror moments after the crime. He said he didn't know why he had struck Miss Epps. At the time of Barber's sentencing, Assistant District Attorney Robert Broussard said, When you look at the facts of the case, he beat an elderly lady to death with a claw hammer. If this isn't a death penalty case, there's no such thing. Jurors voted 11 to 1 to recommend a death sentence, which a judge imposed. Defense attorneys were fighting for a sentence of life in prison for Barber. The court rejected any 6-3 vote Barber's argument that his Eighth Amendment rights would be violated if put to death by lethal injection. Barber's lawyers have argued that their client could be subject to multiple punctures in an effort to establish IV lines to deliver the deadly combination of drugs. Those multiple punctures, growing more painful with each stick of the needle, constituted cruel and unusual punishment his lawyers maintained. They cited three allegedly botched executions in Alabama last year, in which Barber's attorneys said Department of Corrections officials struggled to set intravenous lines in the condemned inmates' veins to deliver the fatal drugs. The Alabama Attorney General's office had urged the Supreme Court to let the execution proceed. Dorothy Epps, Smith's victim, as survivors who have already waited over long to see justice done, the office added. Barber spent his last 24 hours before his scheduled execution Thursday night. Barber refused breakfast Thursday the 20th of July 2023, and ate snacks. For his final meal, Barber requested loaded hash browns, western omelet, spicy sausage and white toast. On Wednesday the 19th of July 2023, Barber had 10 visitors and 6 phone calls. On Thursday, he had 22 visitors and 2 phone calls. Alabama executed James Edward Barber by lethal injection early Friday the 21st of July 2023, under new protocols which included a longer window of time to access veins and perform the execution. After a divided U.S. Supreme Court issued a decision just after midnight allowing the state to proceed, James Edward Barber was convicted in 2003 of capital murder by a Madison County jury in the May 20, 2001, beating and stabbing death of 75-year-old Dorothy Doughty Epps of Harvest. Barber was also charged with robbery in the case. He was a handyman and former boyfriend of Epps' daughter and had done work in Dorothy Epps' home. It took staff three sticks in six minutes to gain access to veins for the two IV lines used, Doc Commissioner John Hamp said in a conference shortly after the execution. The first stick didn't work and the other two did, he said. One IV line carried a sedative and the other carried the lethal dose. He was satisfied with how personnel handled the execution. Barber made a last statement before he was executed. To the Epps family, let them know that I love them. He said. Tell them I am sorry for what happened. Tell my family I love them. 
to the governor and everyone in this room, in the words of my Lord and Savior Jesus, I forgive you for what you are about to do. Five media witnesses were let into the witness room at 121 a.m. Barber had three witnesses in the room. There was a large, square window in the room with drapes drawn from inside the death chamber. The drapes were opened at 1.30 a.m. He laid on the gurney in cruciform fashion, strapped in and covered with a white sheet. He appeared to be wearing a khaki, short-sleeved shirt. There were two IV lines coming from a small square hole in the death chamber wall, with one line leading to Barber's right hand. The location of the other IV line could not be seen. Hallman Correctional Facility Warden Terry Rabin read the death warrant. Barber's spiritual advisor was in the room with him and approached the gurney at Barber's feet. The two appeared to pray for a short time. Then Barber looked around the death chamber and towards the witness room and cracked a smile toward his advisor. His eyes closed at 1.37 a.m. and 64-year-old James Edward Barber took several deep breaths. His breaths became shallower and his stomach appeared to contract rapidly for about 10 to 12 seconds. He appeared to stop breathing at 1.43 a.m. The drapes were drawn at 1.47 a.m. and witnesses were ushered out at 1.51 a.m. The setting in the death chamber was clinical. Witnesses sat in a dimly lit concrete block room that smelled of disinfectant. A sign above the window read stay seated and quiet. It was the state's first execution since Governor K. I. V. issued a moratorium last year and called for a top-to-bottom review of procedures. The state's failure to execute Kenneth Eugene Smith in November was the third time in a row that the Alabama Department of Corrections execution team had problems accessing the veins of inmates during lethal injection. Thank you for watching Death Row.